Hello and welcome back to another video. We have the February scroller box today. I'm not going to waffle on like usual. We are going to get straight into it. It feels very light. There's a little bit of bounce. There's not too much thickness to it, but I'm excited to try something new, hopefully. Let's get everything out of the box and lay this out. Let's have a look at the featured artwork first, which is this beautiful piece. Wow, it's stunning. I love when people can achieve this gorgeous, really, really light wash texture of, I'm assuming watercolours or something water soluble. It's absolutely stunning. I am envious of people who can do faces like this. It's beautiful. So the featured artist is Paulina Savadina. I hope I haven't butchered that, I'm so sorry. My name is Polina and I'm a full-time artist and creator since 2018. After finishing art school, I got interested in portraits and it became my favourite topic to draw. I'll let you read the rest of that and have a look at the socials at the bottom there, which I will also be checking out after I have filmed this. Very lovely. Then, let's get straight into the supplies. That is our sticker there, so a nice little snippet of the artwork. Very nice, very nice. Aha, okay, right. So we have, again, the Viviva colour sheet. In fact, let's have a look at this suite first. We'll have to do the suite first. This is a Frutella suite. I'm assuming this is orange flavour. I will put up the sweet rating there probably won't be a sour rating but if for whatever reason it is sour i will put up the sour rating underneath right back to the supplies so we have the Viva color sheets we've had these i think we've had these twice in a scroller box we've at least had the pads once and then the blocks the actual pans of Viva um once as well so this is a bit different this is actually the metallics set so very interesting. I have a Viviva colour sheet that I I bought myself um, that actually has some metallics in it and they're very lovely. They're very lovely. And as always with Viviva, they are very good quality, highly pigmented um, and very well worth their money. So how exciting. I do love me a Viviva colour sheet. I can't open this. I'm going to hand this off screen whilst I talk about the other items and that can get opened for me by my off screen helper. Then we have a Dela Roney Artist Sketching Water Soluble uh, Pencil in HB, and I think it's made in Austria. Is Dela Roney an Austrian company or is it just where it's manufactured? Who knows? But very nice. I like this like light wash colour um, of green on the pencil. Very nice. There's no plastic coating. There's nothing like that. Very nice, I'd like to see how nice that is, but just a HB water soluble pencil, so that will go really nicely with the uh, Viviva colour sheets. And then for the paintbrush, we have a Sea Whites. We've received Sea Whites a few times. This is a size six round head, I believe, yes. And I, I really like Sea Whites. I think they're very, very nice, sturdy brushes. Um, I believe they are synthetic, um, very, very nice brushes. So I'm quite pleased with that. And then the paper we have received is an A5 pad of watercolor paper. We have eight sheets, 190 GSM. It is cold pressed, so we have that lovely texture to the paper. I don't know if you can see that on camera but a very very nice um i i love a bit of watercolor paper i use it for almost all my artwork is on watercolor paper these days so i'm very pleased with that now very kindly thank you for the off-screen helper for opening this um we have this lovely sleeve on there um we've got a little a little um testimonial on the back there about the color sheets and like i say this is the metallics single set super vivid transparent watercolors 10 colors so as always they always come in these lovely booklets and they are it's basically a piece of i'm not sure whether it's just normal paper or some some sort of butcher paper is painted with the pigment and then we then use water to lift that off that paper and it's always separated with a little bit of this tracing paper like um paper but we have ruby red, pink pearl, fire, lava. So as you can see, these colours don't look anything like these bottom ones. I just love how they change when you when you use them. We have jade and emerald. Then we have aurora and sapphire. We have silver and silver. 
Oh, okay, yeah, we've got double silver and then we actually have double gold at the bottom there as well. I wonder if that's just to fill the pages. Very nice. And then always on the back is a little mixing palette so you can flip these down and use it and mix on here and then that flips away there. So very, very nice. I'm excited to swatch these. I'm, I'm, I'm curious as to how the metallics look. Like I said, I have had metallics in the Viviva colour sheets before, um, but I'd be interested to see um how this full set looks um in comparison to the the small snippet i've had a look at before so now let's go into the scroller zine so this is issue number 102 for february 2024 this is a little bit more about the um supplies we've received then we have a little bit more about the scroller artist and some more snippets of their work beautiful stuff i really like that then we have the scrawler tips and more scrawler tips. So they seem to be doing two pages of that. I think some of it's from the artist, some of it's just extra bits. Um, I will again, as always, read those through as we do the swatches of the supplies. Oh, three. We've got artist advice on a third page. So that's good. Lots of stuff to do with these, lots of things to try. Then we have the scrawler gallery, which is from the box two months prior to this box. So this was the, um, if I remember rightly, the Windsor and Newton, they weren't graffiti, what were they? Charcoal paints. And the scrawler challenge was tessellate. So some beautiful, beautiful pieces on here. Very, very nice. We've got Mabel squeaking her toy in the background. <laughs> oh, look at this one at the top right here. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Um, very nice. And then the top three for this month, we have a lovely mandala type thing here. Very nice, very much like that. We've got this lovely structure and tree and bit abstracty type painting. And then we've got this like kind of through the window, actually a mixture of things. This person has really gone to town with doing lots of different trials with those paints. I must admit they were lovely paints and I think I did a, a mandala sort of thing like this inspired very heavily by the featured artwork in that um, scrawler zine for that month. Very, very nice. And then the scrawler extra is Viva Viviva. So this is all about the Viva colour sheets. Um, and then we have a scroller challenge roundup. So I think that's just having a look back at some other featured artwork that they wanted to feature as well. Very good. And then we've got some more scroller extra. God, they're really padding these zines out. This is exploring the elements. And then finally, last but not least, we have the scroller box scroller challenge fire and ice for this. Very good. So we can use some of these very highly pigmented blues and the reds so we can get some really nice colors and i'm very interested to see what we come up with with that so fire and ice is a very interesting um scrawler challenge so i'm excited let's get to swatching let's see what these colors look like see how the pencil and the paintbrush work with them and we will um catch up soon and do some artwork fire and ice let's get our thinking caps on All right, so amongst this monstrous list of scroller tips and things to try, there are a lot of watercolour skill tips. So lifting your paint, um, kind of glazing, using wet on wet techniques, etc., etc. So there's a lot of the usual watercolour techniques. Um, it talks a little bit about the silver and gold. This booklet comes with an extra gold and silver to play with. The silver is definitely the most iridescent of all the shades. Mix this into any colour for extra vavavoom. Using the gold sh shade with wet on wet technique results in a beautiful granulation, especially when you mix it with other gold leaning colours. Um, so there's a little like swatch of all the colours where they've added the gold and silver on top of them and there is a definite lovely granulation going on there. It's really very, very nice. Um, then there are some warm-ups you can do. So it's even giving you things that you can try and paint as a warm-up, as a tester for the paint, doing these lovely pebbles with the wet on wet technique. Um, so that's it's really nice. They've really extended the tips and, and really extended the things to try with your supplies. So I really like that. I think that's a really nice addition that they've done. And I must admit, these um, paints are absolutely lovely. I, I, I'm, I cannot fault them. They're... They're very iridescent. I must say there are colours that are more iridescent than others. Um, I think that the 
pink pearl colour seemed to really add extra iridescence to everything. Um, and as you can see here, I'm doing one of my usual colour charts with this sort of supply where I basically mix every single colour combination possible with the 10 colours um, and create kind of a chart with all the different colour variations, different mixings um, in there. And it's really helpful. I must admit, I relied on this quite heavily for my actual final piece. Um, I saw that I could mix some very dark almost black colors with the um i think it was lava and sapphire created this very very dark dark blue almost like a Payne's gray kind of color um and similarly with the ruby red and the um, Aurora I think created a very very deep purple so you had some colours that were erring on black there that you could use for your dark shades um, which was perfect. Um, so onto the artwork itself I really racked my brains for things to do for fire and ice and I just could not think of anything that would lean towards my style of artwork. Um, so I went on to I think it was pixabay or pexels.com and found myself a reference photo. I wanted an image of two of the same animal or bird um, so that I could kind of do a fire and ice and originally my idea was to do one in red hues and one in blue hues but then I actually saw um, a little video on her own realities Instagram post um, I think they won the star scroller star um, a year or so ago um, and they put up a little tips and how to use a water, do you know the granulation watercolours that we received a few boxes ago? Um, where you actually use the back of um, your paintbrush or something to scrape that paint and create some texture. So I re was really, really intrigued by that. So try to do that around them using that um, initial idea of one being fire one being ice but instead of the colours of the actual creature I did the background as that. Now I liked the way it was looking as I was going, I kind of changed my mind a little bit later down the line but it was a nice technique and it was a nice thing to try and I definitely want to kind of try that when trying to paint grass or or leaves or or something like that, I think it would be a really cool little technique to try, I highly recommend trying it. Um, but I wanted to add that fire and ice element into my painting somewhere because I don't know, I feel like I'm doing myself an injustice if I don't try and meet the scrawler challenge brief, um, even if it's just very loosely. Um, so that's where this comes in and this is the part where they are colliding and it's obviously creating a bit of a purpley colour because that's what blue and red make. Um, but I quite, I quite liked it. I like the technique so far. Um, and then moving on to the starlings. So this is a reference image of two starlings. I really liked the composition of it, the way they're kind of looking away from one another. And I just overall really, really like that. So I started painting this and I started very, very light, which I wish I had stuck with. I wish I hadn't tried to go towards the deep, dark colours that starlings here in the UK are. They are very dark, they're kind of um, iridescent blues, purples, greens, almost like um, the the what you would, what you see as black on a, a magpie is actually very iridescent blues and greens and purples. So that's kind of what I was going for in the end, but I wish I had left it at this more lighter stage. I think the contrast between the background and the foreground was much, much higher, much better, but I did in my fashion <laughs> i did try and go realistic and paint it to the colors of the actual birds themselves and um, so i do start to layer them up and like i say my color chart came in really handy for this so i highly recommend making that i think it it works really nice to be able to see what colors you can actually make with that limited palette um, and that's where i started to mix in the sapphire the lava and the aurora and ruby red to get the deep purple deep blue and then i added more ruby red to get a deep red as well and you can't actually see it in this painting I, I watched the footage back as i was editing it and you can't actually see how iridescent it is for one and how how many different hues are actually in this dark color on the screen it actually just looks like a flat black which it definitely definitely is not i don't really know how to capture it but it is full of color and because the starlings have that iridescence anyway these metallic paints work beautifully for this painting and I I actually think I would incorporate them into my artwork from now on for certain things like the birds feathers I think it works really really well for those so I 
I would usually, the thing is with metallic paints is I love them, I think they look beautiful, the shimmering is gorgeous and I would buy metallic watercolours like they were coming out my ears and but the problem is I never feel like I can use them in my artwork because I, I do a lot of nature artwork, I do a lot of realism and, and metallics are obviously not in that so much but having done this I can see that there is a place and a use for them within my style and I think I am 100% going to be using these Viva colour sheets, the metallic ones, for, for years to come. I think they're going to be a daily kind of occurrence in my artwork for sure, I really love them. Um, and I think I think they look really nice. But yes, I move on to the starlings in a minute. I'm just painting the stump that it, they are currently sat on. I did mix in what colour was it? I tried to make like a deep brownie colour, which is jade and lava creates a, a deep brown, which worked really well. So that's what I used for the stump. And then here you can see me using the sapphire and lava into this deep blue colour just to start doing the feathers. I did leave gaps because the starlings have white in them, and I thought this was the best way of doing it because the silver didn't quite show up. It only shows up when the light hits it, but it's not a highlight like white would usually be. So it's not a very good substitute for white but the way I did it kind of worked quite well, so I'm quite pleased with that. Um, I will let you watch a little bit of me painting this and then I will come back on when there is some different things to see. going to come on here because I realized that I didn't actually film the last little bit to create that contrast that I really needed with the background and the foreground I actually added a little glow of the silver around the birds which 
it looks really nice when the light's not hitting it because it's a very nice glow but when the light hits it's almost a bit too much of the shimmeriness but you live and learn I now know that I should have kept the contrast and thought about the contrast before I started adding my colors but I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you did please hit that thumbs up and if you are new here hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you know when I post my next scroller box video and I hope to see you again in the next video so thank you very much for watching and I'll see you very soon Thank you.